Hello, good evening. My name is Catherine and I work with SEB Housing. This is the information session for the 24 affordable rental units at the borough in Marlboro. And the purpose of this information session is to give a little bit of background information um, on the available units. We're also going to cover the application, the eligibility and lottery processes, and also what to expect after the lottery itself. So this is all, uh, obviously a live Zoom session. If you have any questions, um, you can either type them into the chat through Zoom or you can go ahead and unmute yourself to ask your question. Um, since the session's being recorded, it's going to be posted on SCB Housing's YouTube channel later on tonight in case anyone is watching this after the fact. Um, and if you have any questions, after tonight's session. So if anything comes to mind and you're watching this after the fact, you can email us at info at scbhousing.com. That would be the quickest way to get in touch with us. Or you can also call us at that 617 number that's on your screen as well. Um, so I just want to start out by giving a little bit of background information on who we are. So SCB Housing, we are a off-site affordable housing consulting group. We're not the on-site management team at the borough. Um, we've been hired by the developer to market the affordable unit, to conduct the information session, and to collect and review the applications that come in for the affordable units. And then eventually we will be the ones running the lottery. So in the initial phases of this, we are your main point of contact rather than the management or the leasing office at the borough. Um, but then later on in the process, you will be in touch with the leasing office over there in Marlboro. The first step in the process is really two um, main steps. The first is to apply for the affordable housing program itself. During that step, that's when you'll be in touch with SCB Housing, and we can answer any questions you have on the affordable housing program. We'll review your application and the supporting income asset tax documentation that you've sent in. And then if you're eligible for the affordable housing program, we will enter you into the lottery and you'll eventually be given a um, position on the waiting list after the lottery is held. Step two, um, you'll be in contact with the leasing office for lease eligibility. So that is completely separate from the uh, screenings that SDB Housing does with you. This lease screening with the management team might include credit, rental history, background checks, the normal type of, of uh, thing that you'd be anticipating from a um, property owner. So once you've been lease approved, you'd be working with the leasing office or the management team over at the borough to reserve and lease an apartment. Um, so what we're going to cover is a lot of what is in the information packet that is on our website for the borough. And um, if you haven't already, you can go to our website, which is scbhousing.com. And if you click on affordable housing opportunities and you select, I want to rent, and then you select the borough, you're going to be taken to a page specific to this property with a downloadable version of the lottery application and the information packet. And like I said, most of the information that I'll be covering tonight um, is in that information packet. I won't be able to go over the whole packet though. So even if you're watching this um, session, I would suggest that you take a look at that if you're interested in these apartments. Um, so if you choose to apply for one of the affordable apartments at the borough, you're first going to need to compete, complete that lottery application. And you can submit it to us in one of several ways. The first would be to email or scan it to us at info at scbhousing.com. Just gonna scroll back there, that's our email address. Um, you can also send it to us by regular mail. Our address is um, 257 Hillside Ave in Needham. If you are in the Needham area and want to drop by, you can do that as well. There is a drop box on the left side of our uh, building and that's checked each day. It's secure, you can sit, drop it off there. So whichever one of those options is most convenient for you, you can go ahead and um, get it into us by the lottery deadline, which is April 10th. So applications are due uh, by 2 p.m. on that date. 
you would need to have your application if you're sending it by regular mail postmarked by that day in order for it to be considered. We encourage you to get the lottery application in early. It is fairly lengthy. You're going to see that there is, as you're reviewing the application, there's a lot of supporting documentation that's required. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that in just a few minutes. You do not need to be a resident of the city of Marlboro to apply for this lottery. There are going to be several units uh, that will have local preference for residents of Marlboro. And we'll discuss a little bit about that later on, but it should not dissuade you from applying for these units if you are not um, living in Marlboro currently. Just wanna check in if there's any questions, again, just a reminder, um, you can go ahead and type them into chat or unmute yourself. So just a little more information about the apartments themselves. So the website for that the management team has set up, there is a website. Uh, the link to it is on your screen now. It's the borrowmarlboro.com. And they have um, a little more information about the units, some floor plans, a photo gallery, information on the uh, neighborhood and the area, a full list of amenities. So check that out if you're interested in the, uh, these apartments. So. The borough is a brand new development located at 1000 Green District Boulevard in Marlboro. There are 24 affordable apartments within the borough and they're going to be rented to households with incomes at or below 80% of the area median income for the Boston area, which is where Marlboro falls in that area um, through this application process. The units themselves feature walk-in closets, premium appliances, and they have in-unit laundry. The community has a lot of unique amenities, as you're gonna see on the website if you checked it out. Um, indoors, those amenities include a fitness center, a golf simulator, a co-working space if you're working from home, dog washing and grooming facilities, and bike sharing. And outdoor amenities, there's also a pool, a fire pit, a roof deck, an outdoor kitchen and grilling area, which they show online. And uh, they mentioned that there's walking trails that lead up to the property if you're looking to explore the area. Um, the community itself provides easy access to Interstate 495, as well as many businesses and restaurants that are on Route 20 out there. Uh, the rents themselves at the property are considerably less than the rents that are being charged for market rate units within the development. There are affordable studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom apartments being offered. There's two studio apartments that are going to have 600 square feet and the affordable rent will be $1,779. There are 13 affordable one bedroom apartments that are going to feature 730 square feet. And those are going to rent for $2,034. One of those one bedroom apartments is considered to be disabled accessible and has features for persons with mobility impairments. There are seven two bedroom apartments and those feature 1100 square feet and are going to rent for $2,226. Two of those two bedrooms are considered disabled accessible. And then there's two three bedroom affordable apartments that feature 1380 square feet and they're going to rent for uh, $2,387. One of those three bedroom units is considered disabled accessible. Tenants will be responsible for all utilities and the heating is gas. Heating, hot water and cooking are all gas. Uh, the management team has let me know that tours are currently available. So if you're interested in seeing the property or the units in person, you can do that by contacting them or stopping by and lease uh, signings will be immediately available after the lottery, which is going to be taking place in late April. So if you're looking to rent um, something soon, these, like I said, the leases will be available soon after the lottery, um, but you would be working out your move-in date with the leasing office. So it could be later as well if you're looking for something a few months from now. So this particular affordable housing opportunity is not subsidized housing. So the affordable rent amounts are not set based on an applicant's income or financial circumstances. So this means that the rent doesn't change if your income changes. These are the set rent amounts. So this um, 
the rents are set for this housing program using a formula that is based on HUD's area median income. So HUD being housing and urban development, um, they release area median income amounts every spring. And Marlboro Falls in that Boston area. And these amounts are set with the idea that the amount should be affordable to households making 80% of the area median income. The rent itself may increase one time per year, and this typically occurs in the spring when there are updated um, AMIs coming out. There would always be advanced written notice if you are a tenant at the borough and there's going to be a rent increase, you will be notified of that in writing. Usually the increases are modest between $25 and $75, and the rents will never increase in the middle of your term. So if you were to sign a lease this year, you're not going to see a rent increase until at least next year. So the affordable units at the borough were selected by the owner and were approved by DHCD as being represented, representative of the units in the building as a whole. So this means that they're not the smallest units, they're not in one location in the building, uh, and they're not identifiable, identifiable as affordable in any way from the outside. Um, since it is possible that there's going to be more interested and eligible applicants than there are available units at the borough, um, that's why we're going through this lottery process to make those units available only to households with annual incomes at or below that 80%. Um, and I'll touch on the income limits as well in just a few minutes. Again, any questions, just let me know. So there are four, if you have the information packet or if you've looked at it, there's four eligibility requirements that are listed on page four. The first is um, the income and assets of the household. So as I've mentioned a couple of times now, your income or assets in order to be eligible for this program and for this lottery uh, must be below that 80% of AMI. The amounts are on your screen now, but I'll also talk about them in just a minute. The second eligibility requirement, uh, you just want to keep in mind that household priority is going to be given based on household composition. So when you fill out your lottery application, you're going to indicate which household type you are and that's either one, two, or three. So for example, really this just means what, how, what size your household is. Um, if your household type is basically tied to the priority that you will have on the waiting list for specific units, for larger units. So for example, a type two household might apply for a three bedroom unit, but you wanna be aware that if you're a type two household, all type three households are going to have priority for that three bedroom uh, waiting list. So the idea is that household types um, indicate larger units, or sorry, larger households. So it's making sure that larger households are given priority for these larger units, so they're not always occupied by smaller households who may not require that extra space. Page seven of the information packet lists a lot more information on the household types as well. Kind of breaks it down a little more for you. Um, the third eligibility requirement is you cannot own a home prior to, or upon move-in, I should say. Uh, if you own a home now, uh, it would need to be sold, meaning you would need to be off the deed by the time you're signing a lease at the borough for one of these affordable apartments. Um, and then the fourth eligibility criteria doesn't come up very often, but you cannot have financial interest in the development. You can't be considered a related party. So if you work for the developer or if you work with the owner, um, or you're related to them in some way, you might not be eligible for this lottery. Um, so just to circle back on the income criteria for the uh, affordable program. So the, these are affordable units. They're being made available at rents that are lower than the market rate units within the community. So that's why they're only going to be um, available for households that uh, make up to 80% of the area median income. So the maximum income limits are on your screen now. They're also on page four of the information packet. Um, if you are a one person household, you can make up to 78,300 that should say. Um, if you're a two person household, you could make your total household income could be up to $89,500. 
All households are going to be required to submit supporting income, asset, and tax documentation to verify their income, and we're going to review that uh, with your application. The required documents that we'll need from you as a household are going to vary a little bit depending on your sources of income, but in general, all households um, will need to submit copies of your federal tax returns for the last year and then copies of bank statements for the last three months. Um, section two of the application, you'll notice it's very detailed and it lists all of the information that you would be required of you depending on the specific income source. So for example, if you're working, it lets you know how many pay stubs that will need to be submitted with your application. So I'd like to give you a basic overview of how your income will be calculated. Um, income for this program is required to be calculated as a projection of your income over the next 12 months for all household members. So all income for household members is included, and this includes any bonuses and overtime that you uh, might receive sporadically. Um, the only exceptions to the income that we would count would be if you have a minor in your household, anybody under the age of 18 who is earning a wage, we're not going to count those wages towards your household income. And then the other exception is dependent full-time students who are working we're only going to count the first $480 of those wages if you do have a dependent full-time student, even if they're over the age of 18. We do we are required by the program to count gross income, not net. So this would be the amount that you make before taxes. We understand you don't take home um, the full amount of your salary, but gross income is required to be counted when we're looking at your total household income. Um, so as I mentioned, every, everyone's income circumstances are unique. Um, some applicants are going to have a steady, consistent weekly salary throughout the year, but other people are self-employed or working seasonally. In those types of circumstances, if you're working seasonally or your income is more sporadic, we might need to look further back into the past in order to project your anticipated um, income for the next 12 months. So there may be other things that we need to gather from you um, if that is your situation. Specifically for applicants who are self-employed, you're going to be required to complete a profit and loss statement and provide supporting documentation for your business. Um, at the end of the application, the last three, four, five pages, there is a uh, sample, a template for um, a profit and loss statement. So it kind of um, if you don't have one for your business already, it's there for you to fill out. If you're self-employed, your business, your business expenses are considered, but for any household who is not self-employed, we're not going to be able to count um, expenses that you have um, or deduct those. It will always be the gross income that we count. And then in general, any income that you've been making in the past, we're going to need to, we're going to need to assume that you're going to continue making it going forward unless we have some sort of definitive documentation from your employer, for example, saying that you're going to be making less in the coming year or, you know, bonuses and overtime aren't allowed in the coming year, that sort of thing. When you're filling out your application too, you're going to see that, um, you know, just a lot of there's a chart um, in the application listing all the types of income that you kind of want to keep in mind when you're filling that out and reporting your income. Uh, so not just wages, but you're going to be writing down, um, you know, if you have any Social Security benefits, alimony payments, pensions coming in, unemployment, workman's compensation, that sort of thing. All of that needs to be written down on your application. There is no minimum income. Um, for requirement for this affordable housing program. However, management teams, including the team at the borough, want to be sure that all tenants can afford the rent, um, regardless of whether or not the household is renting a market rent unit or a affordable apartment. So the management company has set a minimum household um, income equivalent to two and a half times the monthly rent. Those amounts are listed in the information packet, but just to give you an idea, for households looking to rent a studio apartment, the approximate minimum household income is $53,000. Um, for a one bedroom, it's 61,000. 
For a two bedroom, it's 66,000. For a three bedroom, it's about 71,000. If you have a mobile housing voucher, so if you have Section 8, MRVP, some sort of subsidy uh, that is mobile and you can use it at the borrow, um, you can disregard those minimum income amounts because they will not apply to you. Um, if you but if you do have a housing voucher, you want to still check in with your um, local housing authority or the agency who is issuing your voucher to confirm that the agency's payment standards or maximum rents for the program um, will be acceptable. So the, it, eventually the leasing office would confirm with your housing authority that the rents are permissible for your voucher, but still it's best for you to know sooner rather than later. So I encourage you to, to check on that with your housing agency. But any applicants who don't have a um, subsidy or a Section 8 voucher, your income must be between the minimum income floor that I mentioned or the maximum income limit. The only exception to this is really if you are going through your lease screening with the management office and um, you know, you've reported that you have some liquid assets that you might be able to access um, to afford the rent, they may consider applicants whose income is a little bit below that uh, minimum income amount that's mentioned. So ultimately, it's the decision of the management team if your um, income meets that minimum threshold, uh, but you, no one can go above the maximum income limits for the affordable housing program itself. There is no asset limit um, for the affordable housing program. So for rental opportunities like this one, you could have a significant amount of assets. You might be retired and um, you have a lot of money in the bank there. You can, um, you can have as much money in the bank as, as you'd like. You would still be eligible for this opportunity. You just wanna keep in mind that we do still need to collect information related to those assets, even though there is no um, limit to them. And the reason is because if your income, if your assets are generating income, we are going to need to count that income towards your total household income. And so when I'm talking about assets, I don't just mean savings and checking accounts. It would also be the net cash value of any 401ks, IRAs, um, even your Venmo or PayPal accounts, that sort of thing. We will not need documentation for your car or personal assets such as that. Again, just a reminder, any questions, let me know. Just got a few more things that I wanted to cover um, related to the lottery, but we um, I've already covered the eligibility criteria for the program. Um, so we're moving on to the lottery here. So again, just if you're interested in this opportunity, we are going to um, encourage you to apply or as early as possible to get the process started because there is a lot of documentation that will need to be reviewed and submitted. Um, also want to mention on your application, you can apply for as many bedroom sizes as you are interested in. So if you think you might be interested in both a studio and a one bedroom, for example, you should indicate that on your application. There's really no downside to doing that, but there is a potential downside to only applying for one unit size and then later deciding that you're interested in a larger unit size as well. And the downside would be that there might now be a waiting list and you wouldn't have the first choice at those units. So once you submit the application, we're going to review it and contact you if there's any missing information or if anything appears to be incorrect. And you'll be given a chance to resubmit as necessary. Most applicants don't submit a 100% 100 complete application on the first try. There's a couple reasons for that. The first being that there's just a lot of information that's required um, to be submitted with your application, supporting documentation. And then the second is just, even if you have your application submitted, uh, you have 100% of the documentation we need on that first try, um, sometimes we have further questions once we're, we're reviewing your application. We might have questions on bank deposits that we see, pay stubs, all that sort of thing. And that's completely fine. Um, you'll be given additional time to supply the additional information so we can get your um, application complete. 
that's just really why we encourage you to get that application in early so we can begin that process. So if you are found eligible for the lottery, you will be sent a lottery application number in the form of a dot a series of numbers. And um, that will be sent to you via email as long as we have an email address for you. If you don't have an email address, we'll, we'll mail it to you. Um, this number, A.001, for example, will be your number that is drawn in the lottery. It's just meant to be an anonymous identifier, so we're not calling your name out um, during the lottery. It's not a ranking of any sort at this point. It just corresponds um, to the order in which we received your application. So if you were the very first person to submit a completed application for the borough, your number will be A.001. This email will also confirm whether or not your household qualifies for local preference or if you have um, indicated on your application that you believe your household qualifies for it. You would have also had to have, submit, um, have submitted with your, with your application um, confirmation that you either live or work in Marlboro. Local preference might apply to your household if you live, work for the city of Marlboro or work at a business located in the city or if you are um, the guardian of a child who is attending Marlboro Public Schools. Up to 70% of the affordable units at the borough will have local preference, which means that some local preference households will have priority for those units compared to households who don't have local preference. But you also want to keep in mind that for two-bedroom units and three-bedroom units, household type is weighted more heavily. Um, what that means is really if you're a type two household and you apply for a two bedroom unit, you're still going to have priority over a type one household, smaller households, who um, don't have local pref or sorry, who do have local preference. So again, do not be deterred from applying for this opportunity if you don't live in the city of Marlboro. And there's more information too in the information packet um, on page 17 about local preference and how that's going to be factored into this lottery. And then finally, the email that you receive if you are found eligible for this lottery is also going to confirm the bedroom sizes that you've applied for, as well as um, whether or not you've indicated that your household needs uh, one of the disabled accessible units. If at any point you are found to be ineligible for the lottery, when we're reviewing all of your documentation, um, you might be over income, own a home, whatever it might be, uh, you're going to be informed and you're going to be encouraged to contact us with any questions. Um, we want to make sure you understand the notices that you're receiving from us, obviously. The lottery itself is going to be held on April 27th at 6 p.m. in the same format as this information session, Zoom. And um, what I'll be doing is I'll be drawing the numbers from a box and holding them up to the screen so you're able to see them. And then I'll be recording the results. Applicants do not need to attend the lottery, and the results will be sent to applicants by the next morning. During the lottery, every lottery number is going to be drawn. Um, sometimes when we think of lotteries, we're thinking there's just one winner, or maybe in this case, one winner per unit, but that's not the case. Um, this lottery is going to be held in order for us to establish the waiting list for these affordable apartments. So if a type one household is drawn first in the lottery for the two bedroom unit, they're still going to be behind all of the two uh, type two households. So in general, it is more beneficial for you to be called early in the lottery or for your number to be called early in the lottery, but it may not be the deciding factor on whether or not you're going to be at the top of these waiting lists and therefore will have a um, higher chance at moving forward to lease one of the units. <clears throat> Also, households who were entered into the lottery might be found ineligible by the leasing office or may ultimately decide not to lease the unit. So if your number is drawn later on in the lottery, you shouldn't uh, lose hope for being able to move forward and rent one of these apartments. You still may have that opportunity to move forward. You just wouldn't be the first person called forward. So following that lottery, we're going to populate the waiting list. And basically, we're sorting the results on our end. We are taking household type, local preference, whether or not you need a accessible unit into consideration. And we always do our best to try to send those um, lottery results and the waiting list 
to applicants as soon as possible. So you would probably receive them that night. If not, you would receive them uh, in your email by the next morning after the lottery. Um, when you're reviewing that email that has the waiting list attached, attached to it after the lottery, you would find your lottery application number and you can see where you are on each waiting list. Um, at that point, you should have a better idea as to whether or not you will be invited forward to move forward and, and apply for a lease with the, the leasing office. And so at that time, following the lottery and the established establishment of those waiting lists, we will connect the top households from each waiting list with the management team at the borough. Your contact information would be provided to them, and you'd also be given the management team's contact information at that point. So the next step can begin, which would be applying for a lease and doing that lease screening. And so at that point in the process, um, SCB Housing will have already screened you, your household, for lottery and program eligibility, but you haven't been screened for lease eligibility, which is what the management team is going to be doing. Again, this is when the credit, rental history, criminal background sort of checks are going to be coming into play. Um, you should be aware that management teams typically invite more households than available units. So for example, at the borough, there are two three bedroom affordable units, but it's possible that more than two households will be invited forward from that waiting list to complete lottery screening. This is typical of management companies and they, they do this in order um, for the process of leasing the units not to be slowed down by households who don't qualify. So even if you are the first household on that waiting list, um, you don't, following the lottery, you don't want to immediately inform your current landlord that you're giving notice to move because you haven't yet been uh, found eligible by the management company. So just hold off uh, until you are completely um, approved by both SEB housing and the leasing team at the borough. And so at that point in the process, once you've been approved by the leasing office, um, that is when having a position near the top of the waiting list is particularly beneficial. If you're at the top household on a waiting list, you have the top or the first chance, I should say, to reserve an affordable unit. So if you have the top position on that one bedroom waiting list, you're gonna have first choice at reserving one of the affordable one bedroom units. This is true even if another applicant who might be right behind you on the waiting list happens to complete their lease eligibility with the management office first. Uh, the management office is still going to be honoring the uh, waiting list order. So if you're first, you get to choose first if you're found eligible. You'll be able to tour the units, make your decision based on the location of the units within the building, whatever is important to you. And then the second household on that waiting list will have second choice of the remaining units and so on. Um, as I mentioned, these units are... Um, going to be available very soon after the lottery, but I just wanna mention that our program certifications are good for six months. So if for any reason you're moving in or you're leasing an apartment more than six months after you've been approved by us, you might need to submit updated income documentation to update your file. It's probably not going to be applicable here because the units are available uh, now or will be right after the lottery. So once you're leased, you are done with uh, income screenings until the lease renewal date. So at that point, a year from now, we hope you've been enjoying living in the unit and you want to continue to live there before that, after that first year. Um, and if you do, you would need to recertify your income with um, the management team in order to renew your lease, as long as you live in that affordable apartment. If during the year your income has increased, and you're now above that 80% of AMI, that's fine. Households remain eligible for the affordable apartments for as long as their household income doesn't exceed 140% of the current year's area median income. Um, page 16 of the information packet lists those 140% figures for the different household sizes. But for example, a household of two would have qualified for this lottery with an income um, at or below $89,500, 
The same household could make up to $125,300 at the time of their recertification after that first year in order to remain eligible for the affordable apartment. So there's a little bit of wiggle room there um, during that first year. If you have, you know, you get a raise at work, you don't need to move out of the apartment necessarily um, if you still qualify under the 140%. That covers what I wanted to get through from the information packet. Um, again, you can find the lottery application for the affordable apartments at the borough on our website. And um, I'll stick around for a couple minutes in case anyone has any questions. And if not, we can be reached uh, again at info at scbhousing.com um, after tonight. Thank you for running through everything. Sure. I, I was just one, waiting till the end to see everything before I had any questions. Sure. Um, the biggest one I had coming into this, um, a friend actually forwarded this to me. I um, my mom is disabled. She has a really difficult time walking. And I've been trying to find three bedrooms with disability access. Um, so that's really why they sent this to me. They're like, look, that's there. And mm -hmm. we'd be looking at that one three bedroom yep. disabled yep. access room. Um, mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure what could work for verification purposes. I, I pulled her... Um, her RMV disability placard application that's from October mm -hmm. of 21. Mm -hmm. And we, we have the placard. Um, mm -hmm. So I just didn't know if that would qualify or if we'd have to, you know, recertify that she still can't walk. Oh, no, to be, I mean, I don't, I don't think we need any verification such as that. I'm not, you know, I, I don't believe we, I think it's just a self-certifying. Um, I'm not the person who's actually reviewing the applications, which is why I'm saying it like that. But okay. um, yeah, no, I think she would just self-certify that on her um, application. We'd do the income screening and all of that. Um, but yeah, I would encourage her to apply. She would have priority for the three bedroom. I'm not looking at our database now, so I don't know who else has applied that might have, um, re might apply for a three bedroom who also is um, requesting disabled accessible. But Usually, it's not a large group of people who are looking for um, a disabled accessible unit, especially a larger one. So, okay, that's I was yeah. just trying to narrow it down when I saw it was, when you were going through and it was one unit. I'm like, okay, that narrows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, very yeah but really, though, there's not usually, yeah, there's not usually a lot of applicants for those waiting lists. Um, so, yeah, definitely, I would definitely encourage, encourage her to apply and. Um, yeah, we shouldn't need the placard or anything. Okay, great. Yeah, I, it's something, yeah. I think there was something there was like, you needed some attestation, but it could be just a person saying it. So I was like, okay, now that yeah, I've this, this is probably good. Yeah, yeah, because it has the physicians on page two. I mean, right. that was my, really my biggest thing. And then yeah. how you're saying with the lottery, mm -hmm. the, the disability person would come ahead of an abled person. Right. Mm -hmm. right. okay. yeah. For that, for those units, it'd be a separate waiting list altogether. Um, and the first priority for that waiting list is the um, the households who actually require the features of the unit, so the accessible features. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Now it's just hurting cats between my mother and my daughter and myself yeah. <laughs> to get three <laughs> people sure uh, the documentation. Yeah. Uh, three people's paperwork, and uh, my daughter's like, "Oh yeah, my summer job papers." I'm like, "Oh, I have to count you as a human now." Shoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, and the other thing, too, is um, if you don't have everything right off the bat and you submit your application, um, you'll just be sent a reminder, um, an incomplete checklist showing you what you're pending. So, um, you know, if it's coming down to the wire, just send us what you have and, and we'll go um, we'll go from there. Still, though, there's a month uh, until it's due. So you're fine. OK, yeah, I was like, April. OK, I've got time to figure this out. Um, yeah. I know it's yeah. however many pages long. I'm like, there's a lot of details in here, but if there is yeah. a three bedroom handicapped, that's a great option because just looking yeah. at regular apartments, there's so few that are handicapped accessible. Yeah, yeah. Outside yeah. And a lot of, of these newer properties have at least some, which is good. Right. But then the 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 least rate equals the newer property quality. <laughs> They're expensive. Right. And three bedrooms is probably difficult to find too. So yeah. yeah. Exactly. It narrows things down. 
So yeah. I'm glad they sent it to me and I appreciate you running through all the information. Like I said, I was just waiting until you got to the end. So I had oh, yeah. any other questions. I think that was the main one was, Great. you know, proving the disability status and then ranking the priority for the bedroom. So if it's mm -hmm. a three person household applying to the three bedroom disabled unit, that's kind of getting niche. Yeah, you'd be, it'd be top priority. Yep. Okay, great. So yeah, because none of you would be sharing a bedroom, so yes. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, no. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> not unless you get a two-bedroom. Um, but yeah, yep, just get your, if you have any other questions, just email us, um, or if there's anything that is not, um, you know, included in your application, we'll get back to you and let you know that's missing. Okay, and I'm sorry, what was your name again? Catherine. Catherine, okay, thank you. Yep. Yep, anything else? that was it for now. Great. All right. Well, thanks for attending. And uh, like I said, any questions other than that, um, you can either go on our website and check out the information packet or just email us at info at SCB housing. Perfect. All right. Thanks so much for joining. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.